hello, my name is Polish Links and Solina disappeared. This is everlasting summer, let's continue the story. What should I do now? On the other hand, why should I do anything? Why me? Where am I and why am I here? Who are all these people? One cannot be absolutely sure whether Lin Lena is what she seems. Perhaps all this doesn't even exist, so why should I worry? However, for me now, Lena is still the same Lena. The modest, quiet girl I met on the first day. And even her strange behavior could not affect my attitude towards her. In the end, it's not certain that I still exist. So while the word is logical, at least to some extent, I have to play by its rules. I quickly went to the camp leader's cabin. Once inside, I saw Ogadriana lying on the bed and reading a book. Do you know where Lena is? No, why are you asking? She is nowhere to be found. She missed no, both breakfast and lunch. So what? She looked at me blankly. What do you mean, so what? When Shriek was gone, the whole camp was searching him from the early morning. I don't understand you. There is something strange happening to a camp leader again. She was behaving absolutely incomprehensibly illogically. Do you think it's normal? So where is she now? I don't know. Ogantirna replied calmly. This is too much. I started to lose my temper. Ask Miko, she is her roommate after all. That was a good idea, because obviously I would get no more answers here. I went outside, slammed the door and went to look for Miku's and Lena's cabin. It was nice that the orchestra girl had told me before where she lives, which is why I was at the door of her cabin, of their cabin, a minute later. I should have knocked, but for some reason I couldn't. After a few deep breaths, I knocked on the door several times. Come in! I heard a familiar voice. Hey, do you know where Lena is? No, I haven't seen her today. You're looking for her, right? Don't think it's strange. By that time, I started suspecting everybody of hiding information about Lena's location, of conspiracy, of involvement in me being here, of Kennedy's assassination, and of hundreds of other terrible things. Well, you know, maybe I thought she went somewhere and then I just got lost in doing things. Breakfast, music club, helping to clean, and then lunch, and then, and then. Okay, I see. And what about yesterday? Was everything normal? Well, she came late and immediately went to bed. I didn't even notice anything wrong. No chance of finding out anything here either. Thanks. I sat abruptly and left. At that moment, it seemed to me that the missing Lena was the only living person in this pack of talking dummies, and I had to find her. However, it seemed almost impossible to do this alone, so I went for help. Who would be worst willing to help me? Of course, Slavia. I decided that at this time she would be engaged in cleaning somewhere, uh, something, somewhere. For example, the square. So I went there. My sixth sense didn't let me down. Hi. Hey. Have you seen Lena? No, why are you asking? Nobody's seen her since this morning. She was absent during breakfast as well as during lunch. Strange. I also think this is, to put it mildly, strange. Can you help me find her? Uh, sorry. Maybe later. I've got cleaning here to finish. It was like a lightning strike. I took a few awkward steps back and ran away from this place. No, that was not her. It was as if somebody had replaced her. Not only her, but also the other inhabitants of this camp. What is happening? The strangest thing is that it doesn't have anything to do with me, but with Lena. Maybe she came here the same way as I did. Exactly. That could be the reason why she behaves quietly most of the time. No, wait. But what about her knowing Kalissa? Ah, something that's no dead up. My head was going to explode and I started to choke. After catching the breath, I looked around and found myself at the bus stop. I sat on a curb and covered my face with hands. It if before nothing had really been up to me, but was going relatively smoothly, smoothly, then now I was, as always, helpless. But the situation was totally different. 
Watching the battle fall from the side with no threat to your life and being on the hot spot without being able to help the ones you care about are two different things. I was just sitting. Time passed and the sun began to fall. Probably dinner has already started. Oh, what was the difference? I still don't want to eat. I stood up and tracked back to the camp on rubber legs. As always, the only thing left is to wait. I decided to go to the beach. While everybody was at dinner, I could sit quietly and think there. For what could I think about? Enough, maybe. However, my expectations were ruined. On the beach I met Xenia, which greatly surprised me. You also come here? She looked at me from behind her glasses. Do you think I'm not a human being? Nope, I don't mean that. Then what do you mean? Nothing. By the way, have you seen Lena? Nope. I see. What do you want from her? Well, nobody's seen her since yesterday evening. Do you think that somebody could got lo get lost in this camp? She laughed loudly. Sure, Rick succeeded. That was a special case. Those guys are two peas in a pot and you never know what to expect from them. I immediately remember the morning incident. Tell me, why were you chasing electronic this morning? Xenia got uncomfortable. Is son of your business? Just asking. Because he's a fool! She turned away after those these words. Maybe you shouldn't be so strict towards him. Even to me, it wasn't clear whether I'm defending Alchronic or just keeping the conversation going. Then how else should I treat him? Well, give him a chance. You know, such an act requires lots of courage. You say it as if it's something special. Some kind of achievement. Would you be able to do that yourself? I thought and answered after a while. I don't know. Haven't had the right moment yet. I hope you'll have it soon. Xenia said rudely and walked towards the canteen. I sat down on the sand and thought. True that. Electronic was able to say it, but can I do the same thing? That is the question. A big question. If I got the right moment, but which and when? It's always easier to think about something ephemeral, to get ready for dozens of possible situations, to predict the following events for many steps ahead. But most of the time it all goes differently. Even a small event is enough to ruin all your plans. And if you are not ready to do it at any time, Whenever, under any circumstances, if you are ready only when everything is exactly as you had expected, it is unlikely you'd ever get anything worthwhile. Therefore, the only correct answer to Xenia's question was no. Not an ambiguous, uncertain, half-hearted or forced answer. Just no. There is only a simple yes and a simple no. It's always been hard for me to understand that. Between these two extremes, I always work in a great number of different answers like maybe, perhaps, probably if, and it's not sure but I will try. I was so absorbed with my thoughts that I did notice how the darkness stole across the camp. Under other circumstances, I would have gone to sleep now. But looking for Lena at night was not a good idea. I got up and slowly wandered aimlessly. Soon the path led me to the sport ground. I stood there for a moment and was about to leave when I heard noises. Clap and another clap. Something painfully familiar. Badminton. I ran towards the volleyball court and saw Lena, who was unsuccessfully trying to hit the shuttle block with the racket. I stood in shock for a long time. My head was completely empty. I just looked at her and felt sense of joy. Joy at finding her. Joy at seeing her again. Finally, I come, came to my senses and decided to approach. But after a couple of steps, I stopped. And what do I say now? Glad I found you. Where have you been? I was worried. After yesterday's conversation, it's very unlikely she wants to see me. And what if Lena asked me why I was looking for her? Why I was worrying? 
I did not know why myself. Probably it's because she was absent for too long. Maybe if it wasn't her but some other person who I knew I'd have been worried the same way. Maybe if I'd behaved differently yesterday she would not have disappeared today. I'm not sure but I'll try to come up with something adequate. I took another step and stopped again. Probably, maybe, perhaps, not sure. Again and again these words appeared in my mind, in my life, unconsciously without my will. But why? For what purpose? I have to make a decision, once and for all. Although, there are two simple words, yes and no. Finally, it's all clear. I went to the court, approached Lena, smiled and said, Hey! She turned and looked at me. Hi. You were absent all day? Yeah, I was walking around. Everything she said was quiet and calm with no trace of embarrassment or shyness. With no emotions at all, in fact. We worried about you. For the only one who worried was me. You shouldn't have... But you can't... You can't just disappear like that. I tried to smile to make my words not sound like a reproach. I don't think that anybody cares about that. I care. For one. Why? I read surprise in her eyes. Because... Because it's not right. No matter how I tried to be perfectly honest, it came out wrong. Yeah, I see. Okay, I won't do this again. It seemed like this conversation was not interesting to her. Silence followed. I just didn't know what else to say, and Lena seemed to be quite content with the silence. Are you any good? I finally said, pointing at the rocket. Not very. If you want, I... No, I don't. She walked to the beach and put down her rocket and beardy. Okay. To tell the truth, I did not expect their response. Want to look at the stars together? <gasps> yes, of course. I sat down beside her. Then I intently studied the sky. Lots of small lights shined above me. Some of them were brighter, some were barely visible. I never really understood what people see in just sitting back and looking at the stars. After all, here on Earth they are just small dots of light, and it's unlikely that many people know what kind of celestial bodies they are, as well as their size and how far they are from us. Of course, it's so romantic to just enjoy the light of distant stars, but for me it was like star staring at a brick wall. It also had, has its potholes and unevenness in the brick work, patterns on the stone. A star sky in miniature. So what do you see there? Stars! She said mysteriously with her head up. Yeah, I know, I see them too. But what's so special about them? I don't know. It seems that they talk to me. There are other people there. They have their own life. Probably much better than ours. And they too look at the sky and see the earth. Me and you. Voices of the distant stars. I had already heard that somewhere else. You can call it that. Interesting theory. No, no. The theory is quite common. Now look at me. In the dim moonlight, I noticed a small tear rolling down her cheek. Or at least I thought I did. I guess I'm just a more, let's say, practical person. She said nothing, just stared at the sky again. But if you think about it, of course. There's endless interstellar space, millions of planets, hundreds of galaxies. It's fascinating. My voice sounded unnaturally excited. You don't need to talk about all these things. About what? About this. About everything. No, the stars are. Are really beautiful. Why did you come? Now she was crying for sure. Hey, I was looking for you. Why? I don't know why, I just was. You found me, happy now? Well, I mumbled. Why didn't you go to Alisa? What did she have to do with it? Are you trying to say that it's not about her? Yeah, that is exactly what I'm saying. 
Why do you bring this topic up again? I thought we already cleared everything up. Of course we didn't clear anything up. To be precise, we didn't even start it. However, I don't understand why all this is necessary. You think I really want to talk about myself? If you don't, then why? Because. Because. It's because of you. Because of me what? You and Alisa. Me and Alisa what? We don't have a relationship. We don't have anything at all. Don't lie to me. Lin Lena turned her eyes sobbing quietly. Why is this so important to her? It's fucking obvious. <laughs> what else can I say if you don't believe me? Tell me the truth. I've already told you. Then go to her. Why should I go to her? I don't want to go anywhere. Why are you sitting here and torturing me? Oh lord, how am I torturing you? Lena didn't answer. I've been looking for you for an entire day, because I was worried, and came here because you are here, and sitting here because I want to be here. What don't you understand? She stopped crying for a moment. Is that true? Oh, of course. I mean something to you? Even talking into account all the things I've just said, this question came at me unexpectedly. Well, yes. If only you could hear yourself now! She cried, got up and walked briskly towards the exit of the sports ground. Wait, what? I cut off her and grabbed her arm, but she pulled out of my grip. Don't touch me! Now Lena was a totally different person. And I couldn't say that she was aggressive, assertive or super strong-willed. She just had no doubts about what she was doing. Wait, what did I say? That's all true. Save all this nonsense for her. I tried to stop Lena once again, but she guarded me so strongly that I did not dare to argue. Just imagine how I feel. You make up a bunch of stupid things, and now you think that I'm guilty of all mortal sins. Why should you care? I should. She stopped for a moment and looked at me. It's all lies! In my anger, I banged my forehead on an iron post. You can just beat yourself up here. I had seen Lena by be many things, but not ruthless and indifferent. Wait, let's talk calmly. We have nothing to talk about! She crossed the football ground and I trailed behind, trying to in vain to persuade her to listen to me. I don't know why I'm doing all this, to prove that I'm right. So I won't be misunderstood? So I will look better in her eyes? Or is there some other reason? In the case, at that moment, I just felt that it was necessary. And let's continue in next episode. Maybe we'll find the answers for those questions then. See you then. Bye.